Hey, hey, beautiful people. It is November the 6th, 2015 at 2.38 in the afternoon and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous day. I'm back from my farm at Tennessee and, and down on the coast for the next months for the winter. And um, I haven't done a video in a long time. I haven't been on the internet in a long time. I haven't checked any messages in a long time. And everybody's wondering what happened to me. <laughs> in the last days that I was at the farm, uh, we had the power company come out and look at uh, getting the power poles and, and well, it's an off-grid farm, but we were looking at getting the power poles reset. Uh, it's almost three quarters of a mile uh, with my service being the only one that would be out at the end of that line. And uh, we found there's two telephone, two poles down and uh, uh, to get to them, it cost about $35,000 to have the internet hardwired out there for a, you know, um, it's just not worth it. So it uh, looks like when I go back up in springtime, uh, the next part of this process is going to be uh, looking at satellite internet and whatever is available at that time. It's been a wild past several months it's been six months since I uh, have posted a video I actually made several while I was on the forum but um, as I couldn't always get into town and to make the, the video post at that time um, messages that were coming through during the video in the next days and weeks when I had a chance to uh, to revisit the video and to make the post of it it just didn't seem relevant and i've told many persons how how that goes and so if it doesn't seem relevant to me then i'm not anxious to post it and um generally the only reason why my work gets posted anyway is because i just do the video and i can post it right then <laughs> and uh there's never anything planned or scheduled about it. It's just channeling the field, whatever comes out. Well, I do remember that last video I did, and that was the first week in May. It was as the WESAC energies were coming in, and we had three major frequency increases all in uh, a very short uh, amount of time. And ever since then, it's been nonstop. We've just been getting pummeled with energies <laughs> and there's another one coming in um right now it's uh we've had a another blast from the sun and boy did i feel those gamma rays as soon as it hit i mean the x-rays and gamma rays coming off the sun happens right as an event is 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 going down there and they get to us in less than eight minutes but then you have the the massive photon event that's the CME that comes in with the solar winds and that usually takes three or so days later and tonight and tomorrow we're supposed to be having another big blast of, of that but it's been non-stop all summer long as I get back to town and get online I look at how many messages I've got <laughs> when I had uh I cleared them all out from, from I mean, over a million messages uh, on my email box. That was the history of the end times, and I called it the, the, the greatest end times library on the planet. Well, yeah, I got over it and deleted all that in the end of April, and uh, since then, there's been 85,000 new messages coming in, and as I look at the ones that were actually personal to me, and um persons asking me various questions about ascension and would i please continue teaching ascension for me my experience is is no more once once you get to the point where your field has lit up and you were spherical and you have stepped in to the galactic levels of initiations, you're spherical. 
and and really at that point all that happens is your arc field the light body around you which is spherical it fills up with more and more light until it cannot hold any more and then you have a frequency increase and then an initiation into a next higher level and that piece that that plays out persistently i mean it just keeps on going that way once you get to that point so trying to describe my process is is really getting rather boring and there's no way that i can tell anybody um what it feels like to be in this body and hold the level of frequency and, and light that i hold right now um i could not have comprehended the levels that i'm holding in this body right now in november six months ago when when i was saying the frequencies were increasing so dramatically then um that's there's i mean this is just an ongoing process and either you're feeling it or you're not feeling it and as i said back then if you're not feeling it then you know where are you placing your attention what what's your belief system what what is it you want to do do you think somebody's coming here to save you <laughs> jesus is coming back to do all the work for you or the ets are coming down and giving you a little light chamber to put you in to, to do it for you yeah i don't think so and um those of us who have um taken responsibility um of our mastery we're all going through similar experiences and, and we're we're really feeling this transfiguration that's going on with the physical vessel as we hold more and more light and that is a process and um but it gets to a point to where really the only thing that that i notice differently is how quickly things manifest in my field when i hold an intent and now it's rather instant <laughs> and and uh and how it feels to be in this body while i'm going through this process that's that's about the only things that are changing with it um I had mentioned many, many times before in my blogs and my vlogs, my video logs, and it, about how part of this, part of the mastery process is the learning to control your old ways of being, the, uh, the changing of the self out of the 3 and 4D into that master that you're switching into in 5d but you really have to become in 60 and I've mentioned many times the reason why is if you have so much light and frequency within your field which is the raw energy for manifestation that which makes the magic then if you have wrong thoughts and um, intents that uh, that that could create an experience very rapidly almost instantly which may be something that you don't want to have experienced <laughs> as many times as I've taught that uh, as many times as I've said that as well as I know it myself I just had another little learning lesson at Heart of Turtle Island on exactly that and it was so funny oh man and, and, and it's all about our mastery what had happened was I have neighbors there that have uh, have built a subdivision as they divided their property originally this property was split into a hundred acres split in two by two different persons and um, one was my father and the next was a neighbor and he ended up uh, uh, splitting it up and subdividing it for uh, his kids and in selling off a piece where he could make his money back on the property and he always kind of coveted my property and I knew that but I had great respect for this guy and anyway the guy passed years ago and his wife had taken over the property and there was you know they wouldn't allow me to subdivide my property which which you know um, you know, that's all the drama of the whole thing. But anyway, there was some work that was done on my dam 
that I did not authorize and I'd been in touch with the state dam con commissioner. He knew that I was coming up there the first week in May and he had, uh, uh, he had done some work on the dam that I didn't authorize and it was on my private property and he took an engineered dam fill that had um, clay and lime and crushed rock all mixed together and he uh, he took a lot of that off my dam and he put clay back in in doing a repair that I did not authorize. Well, the last week I was up there, last week, <laughs> it rained its boo honky off for the first time all summer. This was just a super, super dry summer. And when it did that, um, the driving over the, the levee, the dam, uh, I started sinking into the dam. And it got to the point to where I was bottoming out in my truck. And I had tree service trucks bringing in uh mulch for for soil there which uh is another one of those little magical things that that uh just happened to happen and and uh i'll i'll tell everybody around about that later on um probably not in this video but in the future for sure but anyway uh as i was sinking uh it was right in the areas that they had done the work and they did work in two places on the dam two different times that uh, didn't authorize either one of them and it was just done to me and uh, anyway that last day I was there I took a post hole digger and I dug down into the area that I kept sinking in and I found out that the state of Tennessee's engineering department the head honcho there who authorized this work to be done without my permission um, had taken out my high grade dam fill that goes almost 300 yards and he put in clay <laughs> with no rock and I took a post hole digger and I dug down about 30 inches and didn't find any rock and I was bad boy I even told James James Brown was there right at that time along with one of the neighbors and and another friend of ours Ron Edwards and uh uh, they happened to see me using the post hole digger, digging down into there, and I started shaking. I wanted to fight. Well, anybody who knows my history knows I was a fighter. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying in 2009, September 2009, when I was told to put my swords down. Archangel Michael was very clear about that. Put your swords down. Quit fighting. Quit training. Quit, um participating in the duality I did and I've been working 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 to change what I did to train myself to be a fighter for so many years to, to become a very peaceful warrior and 1313 um, 13, as I look down as I said that uh, well, I had a little relapse right then. <laughs> it was funny as it could be now that I look back at it. Uh, because what happened was I realized that this intrusion onto my private property and deliberate um, forcing me to, to accept something that I wanted differently and had been in contact with the state of Tennessee to do differently um they didn't care about what I wanted they were gonna do what they wanted and at that point uh, when I dug in and I, I found that there was no rock in the fill that they put my spillway which is probably a million dollar spillway <laughs> at least the dam um I got really mad and I started shaking and I wanted to fight. I was ready to grab somebody and, and at that very instant, that very instant, I had a pop in my knee. I didn't twist strong. I wasn't bending. I was standing straight up, but my knee popped. The next day, as I was breaking camp, putting everything into the Connex, getting ready to come down here to the coast, 
hyperextended that same knee. First time I've had an injury like this in a long, long time. Yep. I had to bring a couple roosters, seven roosters from up there down here. They had too many roosters. My friend that's taking care of my ends didn't didn't want that many roosters in this place. They were causing too much of a problem, so I had to gather them up and and bring them down here. And as as I did that, I hyperextended my my knee and uh and then I was driving to the coast and and that knee swelled up like a grapefruit. <laughs> and then like a cantaloupe. And then a little larger. And boy did it hit me. That's like instant karma. That's exactly what it is. And it's that exactly why when we are going through our process of ascension. We get to points where we're holding so much light and frequency that the only way we can get to that next level is by learning to change our own patterning. Because we could set that light and frequency upon another. We could force our ego self because that's exactly what it is when when you get the way that i was that was bill ballard coming out and all his low dimensional glory <laughs> and you can focus that intent like pointing a wand or pointing a gun at another and that's where the ascension process if you haven't gone through your your training and your initiations it can become very very dangerous it can become dangerous for yourself, it can become dangerous for the collective, and it can become dangerous for for anybody you aim that wand at, your intent, and your focus on. Um, they certainly can feel it. Everybody's empathic. It's just some people haven't trained themselves to, to really work with that empathic abilities. Just like everybody is magical. Everybody has these same abilities that that um, that I have, or that you know anybody on their ascension path has. And at certain levels, you're you're really getting out of your your soul level and going into your over soul level, or soul level could be angelic level, your your third and fourth dimensional stuff, and then you get into the Oversoul level, which is more like an archangelic level, and beyond that, the next level is is uh, is an avatar level, and that's where you really have your light and frequency within your field, and and you are a very magical individual. And you can do good things, and you can do very not so good things too, but that's when insta karma really plays out. That next higher level is the Melchizedek level. Melchizedek level is an actual, that is your true ascended mastery level. And that's where you're, you're out of the polarity and drama and you're really playing within the magnetics. And that is another something that um, these past, past six months has really uh, opened me up to because I'm very mechanical in nature and I have to understand how all this works. That's just, it's just me. Uh, when you understand the spherical nature of how everything works, and somebody had given me Anna Hayes's uh, year 2000 at the Giza Pyramids lectures that she was doing and she was talking about the harmonics and talking about the same spherical experience that that I'm describing too. I had not um, heard her lectures and known of her teachings before I was given this but she's describing exactly the same thing that that I'm trying to relate and um, as you as you go through your kundalini, your kundalini hits your crown, you start hitting shotki, you come back in, you spiral that consciousness back into your heart, your heart um, 
activates and starts spinning at light speed. It's a different thing than just opening the heart chakra because the activation of the heart chakra, you can never turn off the bliss or the, the, um, the sensations that you experience once you activate. You're stepping into the beginning of your ascension mastery. Then all the other seven of your physical chakras light up. And after that, they expand seven times. Then your ascension column is born, goes vertical. You activate the ascension chakra in the back of your head, at the top of your spine, lower part of your head. Um, and then the next, and that's your, really, that level, you are playing at that archangelic or oversoul level right there. Your expansion, your arc field or Merkaba outside of you is hit the second stage. In the first stage, you're integrating your soul. The second stage, you're integrating your oversoul. Your soul can be related to your angelic self. It is within a harmonic. There is another harmonic above that being the oversoul, another harmonic above that being the avatar, another harmonic above that being the ascended master that you are, or connection to God's source, out of form. But we are bringing in that energy into form. And that all has to do with the reactivation of all full 12 strands of DNA within your physical body, which activates the chakras that are outside of your body. Those things happen before you actually go spherical. Anna Hayes was describing what she calls harmonics, which is the same thing that I'm describing, that soul level that's around your body 20 years ago back before so many of us had all this information and memory coming back and, and, and we're going through the process that we're going through now. We couldn't do it back then because the frequencies of earth were not high enough to allow us to remain here in physical form while holding these levels of frequencies. And that's what it is. Each different level, each different harmonic are levels of frequencies and what we are doing 22 22 is look down what we're doing is we're integrating them into the physical vessel and transfiguring this physical vessel holding more and more light within the body and then as we do that we're also becoming less and less of the living is our ego personality and more the living of um, the higher self uh, having the experience here walking around on earth and um, and that's what multi-dimensionality is all about but then what a lot of people aren't understanding is is what Anna Hayes was teaching in the videos and the harmonics you have earth which is the first in the first second and third dimension harmonic one that's the same dimension where our ego personality resides in. You have harmonic two, which is Terra. That is the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension. That's where our soul self is, is located in. Also our ET self, if you want to call it that. Um, you can look back at the Bible and talk about, you know, the angels coming down and visiting somebody or ETs coming down and visiting somebody. And, and that's all interchangeable. But we all came from that, and what we're doing is we're, as we're raising our frequency and reattuning, we're we're reintegrating those levels of self. And many people have heard me talk about the second and third initiation. The 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 third initiation, well, the first initiation is wanting to return to God's self. The second initiation is a a time period of of um of holding that focus um, before you actually start integrating the soul. The, the third initiation is the beginning of the integration of that soul. And you're starting to play in Terra when you're doing that. You're starting to play in that next level of consciousness, which is in Harmonic 2, when you start integrating the soul self. By the time you... Um, 
you're going through your fourth initiation before you have actually activated your heart chakra you allow the soul to take total control of your body you you, you start listening to the guidance you get out of the ego and trying to think things through in your head make the decisions from being a, a middle being into following spirit and and it's that time when you're actually playing in Terra and Terra's right here just like Gaia's right here just like what those of us that are are fully activated in our 12 strand DNAs right now and and we're playing in in those higher dimensional levels of awareness all the way up to the magnetic levels up to you know our ascended mastery levels um, we're we're functioning in a level called Aramantana and Aramantana is the level above Gaia each one of these are nothing more than levels of consciousness octaves of frequencies that's 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 all it is that we can attune to but not just attune to the more we attune to and stay within those levels the more we're bringing those levels of frequency into this body and it's transferring the those energies it's changing the the cellular structure and atomic structure within the body and, and we're changing you know through the crystalline forms um, we're more silica based in in those higher levels we're coming out of the carbon based and and that's what the 666 is all about on the metaphysical level yes 666 manifests in in the linear level too um but on the metaphysical level it has to do with carbon and we're we're changing out of that carbon based and going into silica based so as you attune yourself to terra um, in harmonic two, you're integrating your soul self and letting the soul self come through and control your body. You're always following spirit. You you surrender to that which the ego wants from Earth <laughs> in harmonic one, and you're basically allowing um, that soul self to take over and, and guide your experience in harmonic two. Harmonic three is uh, Gaia, and Gaia relates to the seventh, eighth, and ninth uh, dimensional awareness. This is where our oversoul is. It's also where our archangelic self is. Many persons have um, seen that video with Melina LaFont where I was finally fully integrating my metatronic self i had been working on my archangelic self ever since 1992 i've been going through that process uh, my oversoul process a long long time um when you're playing in that archangelic level um you're still playing in the t levels you're still playing in individuality but you're integrating that higher level of self that so many of us commonly share. Um, it's just like many times I've talked about coming from my Archangel Michael side. I'm not. I'm one in a billion. <laughs> if not, probably everybody here on planet is a fractal of Archangel Michael too. So it's not a big deal. What is a big deal is to, to come from that level of consciousness and be attuned to that level of consciousness while you are experiencing your everyday life to allow that level of consciousness to come through this vessel in everything that you do um, with every person you meet, with every um, activity you do, with every animal you meet, with every thought you have with every word you speak spell you cast <laughs> to be conscious of that is uh while attuning to that level is exactly what we're supposed to be doing well 
I had fully activated all 12 strands of DNA in that Maline LaFont video and was able to integrate with my avatar self, which is the meta self, the metatronic self, um, which is the 10th, 11th, and 12th dimensional states of consciousness and awareness. And uh, the earth relationship to that, earth, Terra Gaia, is called Aramontana. And Aramontana had actually um, been severed when we had the fall and we lost our 12 strands of DNA. That's what the volunteers are about and so many of the ETs, walking, talking ETs and walking, talking ascended masters here on the planet. That's why they're all back. It's to, to put back into the grid here on Earth that level of Aramontana, that level that was missing when the DNA was severed by the Pleiadians and the Anunnaki. And, um, and then you had the Dracos and everybody else going, hey, this is pretty cool. We got slaves down there that as long as we can keep them down and keep their DNA down, then we can be their gods. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's part of what um, what's been going on here these past years is is the battle for what's called Middle Earth, <laughs> and you've got those of us that are trying to give humanity and Earth um, their higher DNA levels of consciousness and to, to plug that back into the grid so that persons can actually ascend and take them out of this constant state of reincarnation, 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 and you just have no end to it. That's what this is all about. That's what this rescue mission is all about. It's, it's to rescue humanity and to rescue Earth, which in turn allows all that is to, to return back to source. What people don't understand when they do get these levels of, of harmonics down is those of us who are at the bottom level, who are literally walking, talking here in harmonic one, when we attune our levels of consciousness to those higher levels, although we might have ET selves that are in harmonic two, yeah, we've got them all the way up. That's how we descended. We already have them. All of us already have them all the way up. But those levels of our self that we fractalized and descended from, if they're attuning to a 12th dimensional level of consciousness, it's the same whether they can be in harmonic 2, 3, or 4 as we are right here in harmonic 1. That's no ifs, ands, or buts. That you're walking around in a different harmonic, walking around in, in a various state of physical form, well, that is different. But the attuning to the level of consciousness, that's the same. Now, there's a lot of people that have asked me about that as I express myself. And to, to really understand what it's like. See, we have, here in Harmonic One, we have the ability to go all the way back to God's source first. <laughs> Even above our higher levels of self without even having to integrate, um, without having to, to step into those physicalities. Um, we can do it here in Harmonic One. And a good analogy of, of how that could be looked at, many persons have seen the, the alcoholic drinks. Okay, you've got a, a, a little highball glass here. And you've got several different types of alcohol that have been layered in. Layered in as harmonic one, that's layered in as harmonic two in the glass, layered in as harmonic three in the glass, or harmonic four. And they all stay separate, but they're all still part in being held within that glass. Now just think of it as God source in the in-breath of God, wanting to, to bring it all back into source, and then he puts in a straw. Where's that straw go? Goes to the bottom of the glass. We in harmonic one are in the bottom of the glass. And when we do our work in harmonic one, at, and we're at the bottom of the glass, and we're ready, we are the highest vibrating and ready to go back home to source, 
when he goes and you have the suction the in breath of god and there's no heat to it it is all it is <laughs> you can literally go through the vortex all the way back to source um from the furthest away from source so that's the easiest way to understand that that i can relate and as you do as we in the farthest away from source return to source that which is out of the time matrix it just slowly goes to the bottom of the glass the it will literally be the last to be pulled out and it is us we are it but that highest level um as we descend into form that's the elohim level back in 2009 i channeled the Archangel Michael message September 22nd and the message was that we the Elohim are back well that's all of us that is everybody it is all of creation the Elohim is our highest era Montana um, level of self first in physical form that actually fractalized out and created this whole lower experience that we're in right now but that's the last that will return back to source. It's us at these levels that are returning first. And that's one of the greatest concepts I finally got this summer while I was out in the middle of the bush and, <laughs> and spending my night watching the stars and having all this higher level of consciousness come through and then it dawned on me we're not trying to work our way back up to be what we had been before we're bypassing that we are at the lowest level integrating all those levels of self right here while in physical form that's the greatest thing we can do it's not being where they are to get back they didn't have the veil put over them we did <laughs> and it's this physical vessel right here that's the multi-dimensional universal transportation mechanism that we're developing and transfiguring and reintegrating and there's nothing greater than that it's not that's that's the greatest possible thing you can do and yeah there's a lot of the higher levels of ourselves <laughs> that don't want us doing that because they cut off their levels to source but by our doing it we're showing them how to return how to replug in themselves i saw that bird fly over me right then and there <laughs> take the messages all the way up wow there's a hornet's nest in the tree up there that's cool there's no way this camera could uh could point that out or get it from here but uh yeah it's a big one anyway that after all this summer and all the awareness that was coming in the understanding that we at this point in harmonic one activating our dna attaining those higher levels of consciousness all the way back to the 12 strand and even higher you know because that's there's 15 dimensional levels within each time space matrix and that ascended mastery level that many of us are touching and experiencing called the magnetics the one that's out of the polarity that you can only get to when you have truly activated and been initiated through your 12 strand 12 step program <laughs> hey, there's my train always always confirmation um that's our 12 step program the returning of ourselves to what we're really supposed to be that's that's where we're here for and we're the first to go back um, of all the higher harmonic levels and you can say higher dimensional levels but that's what i was just explaining the dimensional levels that that 
someone in harmonic two, our levels of self in harmonic two, harmonic three, or harmonic four are tuning to are just the same as the ones we are attuning to here. It's just here we've got that veil of forgetfulness of who we are. Anyway, it's been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful summer. So much happened at the heart of Turtle Island. Um, I could just go on and on and on. There's no way that I could put my experience this summer into just a couple of vids. And, uh, and I have also been um, hitting certain levels of consciousness that I had to work my way through to comprehend and understand before I could even do a, a video that I wanted to release. And uh, so I just did it. <laughs> Sometimes when, uh, when you get the messages that nobody else has really uh, put out there before, you're you're hesitant to to just jump on it, but right now um, I'm quite certain that that's you know I, I, there's no ifs ands or buts to me about it. That's that's exactly what we're doing right here right now. We're those of us who so choose, and 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 you can choose to remain and play on this linear level. You can choose to play 3D. Um, someplace else, you can choose any of the levels of experience you know, in all the harmonics, but those of us who are really locked in to return to God's source. That's what this is all about. We're the first to get through. Those magnetic levels that, that, um, that I say I've been initiated into about a year and a half ago now, um, that's dimensions uh, 13, 14, and 15, and uh, that's harmonic 5. That's the non-polarity. Yes, it still has polarity because all magnetics has to have polarity to exist. Anything that's not just God's source and all that is, is the polarity to have the experience, but it is the return to that level that when I decide to leave here takes me out of the time-space matrix. And um, it is that level that I'm channeling and integrating as a walking, talking acupuncture needle, human acupuncture needle on this planet to put that to the planet, to the consciousness grid, and to all humanity. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. This is the weekend of the Peter Anderson Festival here in Ocean Springs. We've got 50 to 60,000 people that live in this town. There's going to be 200,000 people here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful weekend to be here. It's always a pleasure seeing all the artists and, and all their work um, when they come in. This is a wonderful community to be in. It's good to be back on the coast. The last day in, in Tennessee, I woke up and it was 34 degrees and I didn't want to go through what I went through last year. So anyway, love y'all. Bye for now.